In this problem, we're told a horse is harnessed to a sled having a mass of 236 kilograms, including supplies. The horse must exert a force exceeding 1,240 newtons at an angle of 35 degrees in order to get the sled moving. Treat the sled as a point particle. A. Calculate the normal force on the sled when magnitude of the applied force is 1,240 newtons. B. Find the coefficient of static friction between the sled and the ground beneath it. And C. Find the static friction force when the horse is exerting a force of 6.2 times 10 to the 2 newtons on the sled at the same angle. Right, so this right here is going to be our image, right? And so imagine this right here is our sled, right? And so what we have are the different forces acting on it, right? First thing you always want to do is just draw a free body diagram, right? So we have this mg force going down, right? The force due to gravity. We have the normal force going up, right? This is going to be the force that the horse is going to be applying in the first part A, right? It's at 35 degrees, and we know it's going to be equal to 1240 newtons. And then we also have this frictional force, right? Which is going to be used in the later problems uh, that's going to stop it from going. Right, so let's actually just write down the numbers that we know. So we know this angle is 35 degrees. We know the mass is 236 kilograms, right? We know F, the force, is equal to 1,240 newtons. And then, yeah, that's about it. And so let's just go ahead and start with A. So for A, we're trying to calculate the normal force on the sled when this force is being applied, right? So how do we want to do this? So the way we calculate normal force, the way you do it is by taking the sum of the forces in the y direction. And so the sum of the forces in the y direction is going to be equal to zero. And the reason that is, is it's equal to zero because we're not moving in the y direction, right? And it's because it's at rest, right? It's not moving. If velocity is zero, then acceleration is zero, right? And force just equals ma, meaning it's going to be zero. Okay, so you set zero equal to, and then you sum up all the forces in the y direction, right? You don't want the ones that angled. Like, so notice this one's not angled. So when we add up the forces in the y direction, we want it to be the ones that are perpendicular, right? Perfectly in the y. So what are the different forces? And so we label them positive if they're going upwards, negative if they're going downwards. So we have F sub n going upwards, right? Minus mg because it's going downwards. And then we also have this, uh, the y component of this force right here, right? That the, for, uh, the horse is going to be exerting, right? And so this force, right? If we want to find the y component, it, if you want to find the y component of a vector like this, right? You just take the sine of the angle, right? And then you just multiply it by the, 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 right, the force, right? Which is 1240. Right, and you, you know how to do that, right? Imagine it's like a triangle, right? So it's like a triangle. This is 1240. This is our angle, 35 degrees. What we're trying to do is solve for this, right? And let's just call this y, for example. If you take the sine of the angle, 35, it's equal to what? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, meaning the opposite side is y over 1240, meaning if we want to solve for y, which is what we want, you just multiply both sides by 1240, right? And you notice you just have 1240 times the sine of 35. That's essentially how you derive it. And so I'm only going to show you how to do it in that, uh, for this part, but just keep in mind that's how you do it for uh, the rest of these. So 1240 times the sine of 35, that's going to be uh, this force right here, right? And so since it's going upwards, we want to label it positive. So plus 1240 times the sine of 35, right? And so keep in mind we're solving for f sub n. So if we want f sub n by itself, right, we just have to add mg. So mg is going to be, right, so m is a 236. Right, multiply that by g, which is 9.8. And then we added this to the other side, and then we're minusing this. So minus 1240 times the sine of 35. Right, so just go ahead and plug this in your calculator. 236 times 9.8. And then you want to write 236 times 9.8 minus 1240 times the sine of 35. Right, when you do this, you're going to get f sub n is equal to 16. 1601.565 and so on, right? You can round however you want, uh, right? So you can just round it or however you want to do it. Just say 1600 or whatever. I'm just going to leave it in this form though. So uh, we've measured force in newtons. So this right here is going to be the normal force, right? So this is your answer to A. Now let's move on to B. So for B, what we're trying to do is find the coefficient of static friction between the sled and the ground beneath it, right? So we're trying to find the coefficient of static friction or mu sub s, right? The Greek letter, and this is what we use to denote... Um, coefficient of static friction. So how do we find this? So the formula that you use for this, right, is force of friction, right, is equal to mu sub s times f sub n. So if we want to solve this, we need f sub n, right, which we got in the last step, so we don't have to worry about that. But we need the force of friction. So what is the force of friction going to be? Essentially, it's just the this force right here, right, that's labeled. Now, what is that, though? So they don't tell you it uh, exactly, but it's basically implied. So they tell us the horse must exert a force exceeding 1,240 newtons at an angle of 35 degrees in order to get the sled moving. Meaning, in order for us to move the sled, he has, or, or the horse is going to have to exert this force. Meaning, right, so think about it. If basically this force 
it has to be equal to this force, right? Because the coefficient of friction force, if it was less than it, then it would move, right? Like if this force was greater, 1240, right? And it's at an angle, so it doesn't really make sense. But keep in mind, if this was 1240, right, which isn't exactly because this one's at an angle, but keep in mind, they have to be equal, right? So these two forces have to be equal. But keep in mind, it's not going to be this force. It's actually going to be the X component of the force, right? Because the frictional force is in the X direction, meaning the X component of this force right, that the horse is applying, because that's the amount required to move, has to be equal to uh, the friction, right, the frictional or static friction force, right? So essentially, F, right, so the force of friction, right, you can call it F sub F or F sub S, whatever you want to do, it's going to be equal to the X component of this, right? What's the X component of it? It's just going to be uh, the magnitude of it times the cosine of the angle, right? So the Y, right, remember the last one, the Y was the sine, but this time it's the cosine for the X, right? So now this is 1240, times the cosine of 35 equals mu sub s, right? And I'm going to divide both sides by f sub n so we can solve for it. So this side is just divided by f sub n. Well, what's f sub n? Right here, 16, right? Because the, the normal force isn't going to be changing on this problem, right? It's the exact same. So you just want to do this 1240 times the cosine of 35, right? Plug that in and then divide by 16, 0, 1.565. So I'm rounding a bit, right? So this is a more rounded number. But essentially... When you do that, you're going to get it equals uh, point six three four two two and so on, right? So I used a uh, right a more exact value, right? Because I used uh, this right here, right? I didn't multiply it out and round, but yeah. So point six three four two two. You can just round however you want. You can just say point six three four, and then there's no units for uh, coefficient of static friction or any friction by that matter. But yeah, 0.634, that's going to be your answer to B, right? So the coefficient of static friction, 0.634. Now let's move on to C. So for C, we're trying to find the static friction force when the horse is exerting a force of 6.2 times 10 to the 2 newtons on the sled at the same angle. So the thing that's changed about this problem is instead of it being uh, 1240, now the force is uh, 6.2 times 10 to the 2. That's just 620, right? Because 6.2 times 10 to the 2 is just means uh, you just multiply it by or you just move it over twice. So 620 newtons, that's going to be the new force being exerted, right? So this is now 620 newtons, this force. And what we're trying to do is solve for the static frictional force, right? So we're trying to solve for F sub F, right? So mu sub S times F sub N, right? This is the formula we use to solve for the frictional force, right? When I say static frictional force, when they say that, it's F sub F or F sub S, right? You can label it how you want. But keep in mind what we need to solve it. We need mu sub S, which is what we got in the last problem. And we also need F sub N. Right, And so F sub n, it's going to be different compared to the last one. We can't use this one. And why is that? The reason that is, is because the force being applied is actually different. This one, it was 1240 newtons. This one, it's going to be 620 newtons. So it's actually going to be changing. So let's just go ahead and solve, right? So we know mu sub s, which is 0.63422. I'll just use it more rounded. And then we need to find F sub n. So we've got to find the normal force uh, when this force is being applied. So let's do that. So the sum of the forces in the y direction, right? That's how you start it. What is it going to be equal to? So it's going to be equal to zero again. And then what are the forces? So zero is going to be equal to, we still have F sub n, right? That's in the Y. We still have mg, so minus mg because it's going down. And then plus, instead of it being uh, 1,240 newtons, it's going to be 620. So 620 times, when we need it in the Y, remember this one was in the Y. So 620 times the sine, and then uh, the angle is exactly the same. So times the sine of 35, right? So if we want to solve for F sub n, it's just going to be mg right, minus this. So m is the mass, which is the same, 236, times g, which is 9.8, and then we're minusing it, right, because this was added to the other side, and then we minus this. So minus 620 times the sine of 35. All right, so go ahead and plug this in, 236 times 9.8, right, and then minus 620 times the sine of 35. Yeah, so when you do this, you're going to get f sub n, is equal to 1957.1826, uh, right? So this is now the normal force, and we got it, right? We have the normal force, we have mu sub s, and we can solve for the frictional force. So 1957.1826, and when I multiply this out in my calculator, I'm just going to actually use the exact value. So uh, multiply that, right? The normal force multiplied by 0.63422, right? And when you do this, you're going to get it equals 1241, 1241.284355, right? So this is going to be your number. You can round however you want, 
right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I'm just gonna move it over three. So one, two, three, and I'm just gonna say it's gonna be about 1.24 times 10 to the three newtons, right? So you can put whatever form you want, just make sure you do what your teacher says. And so, yeah, keep in mind it's newtons because it's force. Uh, but yeah, so 1.24 times 10 to the three newtons, that's gonna be your answer to C. But yeah, so these are your answers, A, B, and C, and hopefully you found this useful.